Our great need is to be occupied with Christ, to sit at his feet as Mary did, and receive out of his fullness. Our chief delight should be to consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, to contemplate the various relations which he sustains to us, to meditate upon the many promises he has given us, to dwell upon his wondrous and changeless love for us. As we do this, we shall so delight ourselves in the Lord that the siren voices of this world will lose all their charm for us. Ah, my reader, do you know anything about this in your own actual experience? Is Christ the chief among 10,000 to your soul? Has he won your heart? Is it your chief joy to get alone and be occupied with him? If not, your Bible reading and study has profited you little indeed. Black and white. Profiting from the Word, next on So What? I'm Chris Dorman. And I'm Don Wade. Welcome back to So What. We've been using A.W. Pink's book, Profiting from the Word, to look at things we should be gleaning from the scriptures to see if we're truly profiting from our time in the Word. We spent the last three weeks looking at Pink's chapter on uh, the, the scriptures and God. And today we are going to look at the scriptures and Christ. What should we see in the scriptures? What should we glean from the scriptures to know we're profiting from the Word as we contemplate Christ? Okay? <laughs> All right. So that's, that's what we're doing. Now, friends, we, don't, we try not to limit our conversations about things that are happening politically here in the United States because this podcast, by the grace of God and the wonders of modern technology, goes to all corners of the world. But there are things happening here in the United States that I know people all over the world are aware of because many of you who have reached out to us yep. and have asked us how we're doing in light of, of the riots and the protests that are taking place in the United States right now. And it's the backdrop of what's happening here that I think informs our message today. For sure, Chris. And, and, and you know, can I just say that opening quote? I'm like, my heart is so convicted over what Pink is saying there because my heart gets so distracted over everything that is going on in our culture. It does get distracted. I have two friends right now, two brothers, and, and they're, they're your brothers too. Yeah. And they live in different parts of our great country and they have they have the same sort of political affiliations, um, but they have two very different perspectives on what's happening right now. One person is so angry his face is beat red with rage with what's happening. He is enraged by the, monument, by the monuments being torn down, by the rioting, by the looting, the wanton destruction of property, the destroying of people's livelihoods and businesses. He is just enraged. And he's looking at it from a political perspective and that this one particular group of people who are a little further left than he is to the right, these people are the problem and we've got to take care of them they're the issue. And I've got another brother. You have another brother who's afraid, who sees this destruction, who sees this wanton destruction and this looting and, 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 and all these things. And he's so filled with anxiety. He's not angry. He's yeah. scared. He's scared and he's crying. He's like, my gosh, what's happening to my world? What's happening to my country? And he's frightened and beloved. When you're faced with difficult things, when you're faced with things that are confusing, perplexing, difficult, stressful, anxiety producing, we can respond in those ways too, can't we? We can get angry, we can get frustrated, we can get sad, overwhelmed with fear, we can get, we can have righteous indignation about this injustice, whatever it may be, the unfairness of it all. We can respond in those ways too. Is that what, is that what the word, is that what the word tells us though? Is that what, is that what Jesus wants for us? I guess, Chris, the, the question is, is, what is God calling me to in the midst of a world full of chaos that, by the way, has always known chaos always. and always will know chaos, this side of being in glory, we're going to have that. That's right. So we're having a little bit of, uh, of that more so maybe in the United States than we've had for a while. But you know, there's places all over this world, Chris, that uh, have known chaos and are in chaos now yeah. and will be in chaos tomorrow and have had it for thousands of years. There's wars and meltdowns and things that are happening political unrest, all of those things, Chris. It's a reality. It is. So what is God calling me to in the middle of all of that mess? 
He's calling you to abide at his feet. He's calling you to consume your heart and mind with the Savior, that you might have a heart and life that reflects the Savior to a world that is dying because they don't have him, because they don't believe in him. And those that, that say they do have taken their eyes off of him and put their eyes on their circumstances. They've taken their eyes off heaven and put them here on earth. And what happens? Anxiety, confusion, anger, some selfishness. Yeah. Some selfishness. Yeah. That it's got to be my way or it's wrong. And you know, Chris, it, this was not something foreign to the folks that were walking with Jesus back in his day. Yeah. There was a lot of unrest going on in the world. Yep. And people were looking for a Messiah many times that looked a little different than what Jesus actually brought to the table. Uh, yeah. Right? But yeah. there's a really important story yeah. that many people may be familiar with that speaks to what we're talking about. Yeah. Right? Mary and Martha, Luke chapter 10. Let you me, know the story. <laughs> let me read it for yeah, us. Yeah, please. Real quick. So, yeah, Luke 10, starting in verse 38, just a handful of verses. Now it happened as they went that he entered a certain village. Jesus entered a certain village. And a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mar uh, Mary, who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was distracted with much serving, and she approached him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, to uh, tell her to help me. He, she says, therefore, tell her to help me, God. Help. Telling Jesus what to do. <laughs> and Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things, but one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen that good part, which will not be taken away from her. <laughs> Friends, there is a principle there that we all need to take to heart right now. Okay, First, was Martha wrong for wanting to be a good hostess? No. The cultural and societal norms of her day taught her that what Mary was doing was wrong because women weren't disciples. Women were behind the scenes, making every, taking care of the men, taking care of the disciples, taking care of the teacher. Martha is doing what society and culture commanded her to do, dictated, that practice. This is what you should do, yeah. okay? Is it wrong to serve? Yeah. Is it wrong to serve physically the needs of Christ or his people? Is that wrong? It's not wrong at all. And Jesus isn't saying that that's wrong. How do we, what do we know what's wrong by what Martha is saying? What does that tell us about what's going on inside? Martha had two things to say, and both of them included the word me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right? That's right. Lord, he, he, she was making it about herself. Yeah. And she said, why don't you tell her to come and help me? It wasn't about Jesus at that moment. It was actually about what was going on in her heart about right. her sister not helping her out. That's right. The problem was what was going on inside. And why was that, why was that going on inside? She'd really, she had lost sight of Jesus. It says that she was distracted. It says that she couldn't pay attention to what was being said because she was distracted. And because she couldn't keep her eyes and her mind on Christ, she went immediately to herself. She condemns her sister. She, con she doesn't condemn the Lord, but she tells Jesus what to do. <laughs> Why? Because of herself. And we do that. Man. Mm. We do it all do that. the time. And friends, for our keyboard warriors, Facebook fighters, and whatever, trolls, whatever, how much of what you do is about you and vindicating your own passions, your own biases, your own perspectives, and, and putting the name of Jesus, just slapping it on there and saying, see, this is what we're supposed to do. And everybody else is wrong and damned wrong to boot. You know, Chris, the thing that we learn from what Mary did isn't that it's better just not to serve. No! What we, what we see is a heart that says, I want to sit at Jesus' feet and hear his word. That's what yes. it says she was listening to his right. word. Martha could have been hearing his word while serving. So here's the issue, Chris. I spend a bunch of time on my phone looking at what the news is telling me and less time with my nose in the word hearing what Jesus is saying. Right. I'm going to have a lot of turmoil and it's going to stir up all kinds of messes in my heart. Right. And I'm going to become Martha very quickly saying, Lord, Lord, I want people to do things for me. 
to make my life comfortable, to make me okay, instead of making it about Jesus and hearing from him. Exactly, and how much time are you spending on social media and the news in comparison to the time you're spending in the Word? And compare how much anxiety you have as a result. One of these brothers that I'm talking to you about, we had a good conversation this week, and I said, you know, gently reminding him is that you need to get your, stop watching TV. Yep. Stop reading Facebook. Just stop and put your nose back in that book. Put your nose back in that book that Jesus would fill your view, that all you could see is Christ. And watch that anxiety melt away. It's that song, Chris. It's that song. Go ahead. Turn your eyes upon Jesus and look in his glorious face. And the things of earth will stro grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. The bigger Christ becomes to you, the less important these things are. Because you see what's really important, beloved. The issue is black and white. It truly is. There is right and there is wrong. There is truth and there is falsehood. The problems we suffer from are not societal. They're not social. They're not cultural. They're not racial. They're not political. Our problems are moral. It is sin. The problem is our hearts. Our hearts are corrupted by sin and we are inherently selfish. And therefore we do wicked things because we are wicked. You really want to make a difference? Then you know what? Do two things. Two things. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And love your neighbor as you love yourself. Those people who you fervently disagree with, okay, that make you beat red when you contemplate them, can you honestly say in your heart of hearts that you love them? Can you honestly say that? And if you can't, the problem's not them. The problem is your heart. And you're not profiting from the word, man. You're not. You're not. You are not profiting from the word. He says, be no longer conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of my mind. And we do that by being in the word of God. And if we are profiting from the world, word, not from the world, from the word, then we, Chris, are going to see what you're talking about That's coming right. out, bubbling up in our heart. Love That's for right. God and love for others. And we're going to start seeing the enemies of Christ as people that are broken and sinners that need Jesus more than anything. That's right. And our perspective on them will change. Yes. So, that's a great point, Don. These people that we're so mad at, on either side, these people that we're so angry with, most of them are just lost. Because there are Christians who are out there, right, and left and right, but there are a lot of people out there who aren't saved. And their problem is what's in here, because they don't know Jesus. And that's, that's what they need. And that's what the world needs. More than we need to worry about our monuments, our statues, uh, <laughs> to, to fund the police, not fund the police. Oh my gosh, what we need, what we need is the gospel faithfully proclaimed. And we need Christians to faithfully, humbly, lovingly, compassionately, graciously live for Christ and not their own personal agendas. We need more Jesus in our lives. That's what we need. We do. We need more Jesus. We don't need more Fox News. We don't need more CNN. And here in the United States, our salvation does not depend on who wins that election in November. No. Nope. Okay? And I'm just going to go out on a limb and say, God doesn't care what happens to those monuments, whether they stay or whether they're torn down. Okay? He doesn't care. He cares about what's going on here. Right. And you should too. Put your eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of your faith, that the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and his grace. Amen. Thank you for tuning in, my friends, and I'll talk to you next week. We'll see you soon.